We were just talking about Chipotle in the break. We were very excited about <laughs> eating at Chipotle. <laughs> and you were teaching me hacks. I was. Chipotle hacks. I'm was. learning. <laughs> Megan, I'm getting so smart from these guys. <laughs> these guys are like, they're the, the Chipotle whisperer. Yeah, <laughs> but Starbucks is another company I can equally get behind because I am not a coffee drinker, but Starbucks has so many options. It doesn't really matter if you drink coffee or not, but not such a good day for Starbucks. The CFO basically spoke at the Goldman Sachs Global Retail Conference this morning and basically said that all of the 2020 EPS growth will be meaningfully below what they originally expected. So the stock was down on the news, but now it's kind of come back a little bit. So it seems like it's not going to stay lower, I, I doubt, for very long. But Megan, what are you seeing in your Starbucks data. Then we look at Starbucks, we're listening to people talk about going to Starbucks or ordering a pumpkin spice latte, especially right now, that tag is popping. And what we see is about 5% growth year over year. I think that's pretty in line with what they've previously reported their last quarter. But in contrast, I think the stock is up about 86% in the same period. So there's that's just insane. That's, you know, tremendous growth in comparison to our purchase intent. I will note that, you know, one thing that Starbucks has been doing really well lately is, you know, they're high on loyalty, they're high on their rewards, and they're really good at increasing the amount of money that people spend when they go to the store. So that might not necessarily be reflected in that purchase intent chart. You know, that that chart is really displaying um, increased traffic and increased chatter of people talking about spending money at Starbucks. You know, Megan, this is interesting because this is a different kind of divergence. It's not one yeah. going one way and one going the other. It's one going up, but but the price is not going way past, right? So it's like exactly. it's like overdone almost, which is what we like to talk about all the time. This is a new level of interest that you guys are showing us here. Yes, for sure. I think you nailed it. You know, it's not that purchase intent is struggling. It's just it's definitely not keeping up with the pace of the stock. Right. <laughs> I feel like we, Starbucks has done a really good job basically pushing into the food space also mm -hmm. because now they're competing with McDonald's breakfast and they have all these different kinds of meals you can get at Starbucks now, which were never really much of a thing, I feel like, a year or two and ago. And I think that alludes to what Megan's talking about with not being able to get that, you know, look at the average ticket price of each Starbucks customer. So not only are they potentially growing their foot traffic and people going there, but they're also growing the amount of money that they're spending, which your data doesn't have any visibility into. Exactly. Um, I think that, you know, the next chart that you guys are going to look at, it actually shows their app usage. So people talking about downloading their app or using their app and you can see that it's growing and it's being supported tremendously. So people really like their app. Um, they're loyal Starbucks customers, which is what you would want to see if you are um, from Starbucks. I think, you know, just an external research, if you look at their monthly active users, it was the highest app. Um, for like QSR restaurants in 2018. So compared to like Chick-fil-A and McDonald's and things of that nature. So that's a promising sign for Starbucks. I, I definitely have to say, this was one of my favorite ones to look at social media on. This was a softball <laughs> we gave you today. <laughs> this is so, this is it like, was. think about this, Megan. We're talking about McDonald's, Chipotle, and Starbucks. This is Jenny's dream board. I right? know. <laughs> I know. The yeah. joke was when I'm not on the show, I produced the show. I'm like, I could have produced it today. I love all of these stocks. But our first tweet is from Jin Lane Securities, who says, Starbucks whacked 5% on guidance. People drink less coffee in recession. So actually, what was more interesting than this tweet itself was the responses I saw as everyone was tweeting that when people are not going to Starbucks, they just make their coffee at home. So, mm -hmm. Megan, I was really curious if you see any kind of struggle between a Keurig versus like a Starbucks. That's a really good question. I don't know off the top of my head how Keurig is doing, but in terms of just Starbucks purchase intent, um, we're not necessarily seeing weak weakness. Um, I think it's interesting that you mentioned that you don't drink coffee, but you still go to Starbucks. If you, you know, when you look at the different tags that make up this company, there are a lot of mentions that aren't necessarily coffee based. You know, we see strength in Tivana, you know, you're seeing strength in um, these Frappuccinos and I don't think Frappuccinos have caffeine, but you know, you have, they have very diverse menu options that customers can decide from. Yeah. I mean, Tivana was one of the scariest things to ever happen to my wallet. And that's kind of what our next tweet is about. So our <laughs> Next tweet says, Starbucks has 1.2 billion in total unredeemed value on Starbucks cards, which is like a 0% loan from customers. It also recognized 145 million or 12% as card breakages, i.e. the value customers aren't expected to redeem. So essentially Starbucks is borrowing money from customers at negative 12% year over year. This is so fascinating to me because the app is something that's become, I feel like so relevant as of lately. And now I put money on that thing like it's nothing. And I'm not alone. I mean, I know every 
and it reloads like, oh. automatically. <laughs> it just reloads. I gotta turn that off. Aren't so like scary. gift cards though? <laughs> is, aren't the percentages with gift cards like a? 25 or 30 percent redeem that that's all that that when someone buys a gift card it's crazy in, incredible numbers how low the redeeming you know when you get a gift card how much they they redeem it mm -hmm. i'm i'm chopping this up the way i want to say <laughs> it i know what you're saying you know what i mean <laughs> yeah the I redemption mean, so rate is low i'm agreeing with, with his point that mm -hmm. it's amazing how much money gets left out there but that also adds to the loyalty aspect too because if you've already put the money in there you're less likely to go to one of their competitors you're like oh i've already spent the money at starbucks i'll go there they're on every corner right. i'll find one if you're out of town or whatever and it's the same thing with uber and lyft i know uber has really made a push towards uber cash which is similar here and so this is really just the big push towards loyalty and when you look at your app usage does that kind of reflect their loyalty in terms of the growth there i think so i think that that's really reflective because once you you know when you download an app on your phone and you get so used to using it why would you go somewhere else it's it's all about the convenience factor and then you get your order set you know you can i can drive up like have my order set run in and pick it up and i don't even have to wait in line for my starbucks like it's brilliant and they make it so easy to spend money which is what you want to do so i think as long as they can you know keep increasing their loyal customers and as long as people are willing to pay more and keep increasing their ticket price then that's you know that's positive for Starbucks. Yeah, it's like Disneyland. You're really <laughs> spending money that's already out of your account, so your account balance doesn't go down because it's already out, and you're spending money that you, you feel like you've already spent. And that's my exact problem, I think. And the convenience <laughs> thing that Megan just mentioned is there's one yeah. right by where we work and one beneath my apartment, so I'm just constantly there, whether I want to be or not, I guess. I literally yeah. announced to the group that we were going to cover Starbucks today as Jenny was walking out the door to go to Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was great timing. Yes. But Megan, awesome. when we're looking at everything here, we do mention the divergence. We do have this new news, obviously, from the company's uh, you know leadership as well. Does that impact your outlook on this company for the medium to long term or even the short term? I think that that's what makes it a tough call. Is it's you know Starbucks is doing well. They're showing year over year growth, but that's definitely not keeping up with the pace is how much the stock has gone up in the last year. So I think that that's a call that investors are just gonna have to make, how, how risky they wanna be. I think that's a, a good message always for any stock, but when you're looking at this, then maybe you guys are waiting for a little bit of a pullback before you wanna jump in here. Perhaps, yes. 